Welcome back. Former state senator and recent gubernatorial candidate Mike Johnston says he wants to be the Democrat who unseats Republican U.S. Senator Cory Gardner next year. Like Gardner, Johnston comes from the western slope of Colorado. He's now one of at least four people hoping to challenge Gardner in what's expected to be one of the most high-profile Senate races in the entire country. It was just this past November that Democrat Jason Crow unseated Republican Mike Kaufman in Colorado's 6th Congressional District. Now one of more than 100 new members of the House of Representatives. Congressman Jason Crow just introduced his first bill. I had the chance to talk to him about the End Dark Money Act. So tell us, first of all, how are these donors hiding their contributions? Yeah, you know, it, this is really absurd, mm -hmm. and this is something I've been talking about for many years, actually, that, you know, we're not going to have the, de the democracy uh, and the gov government that we deserve unless we end the corrupting influence of dark money in our political system. So what happens is these mega donors and these billionaires, they donate to these social welfare organizations, these 501C, mm -hmm. you know, 501C4s, and these are organizations that are nonprofit, and they're designed for the social welfare, but they're being used to hide money. So they donate money to these organizations undisclosed, and then these organizations participate in electoral activity. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's an abuse of the system. There are rules already in place that prohibit it from happening, but the IRS is unable to enforce those rules. My bill allows them to enforce it, provides resources so they can close the loophole. So pretty simply, it, it just gives them the money and the resources they need to enforce a, a law that exists. That's exactly right. I mean, the, 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 the law exists for a good reason mm -hmm. because these nonprofit entities are not supposed to be used for you know hiding mega donor donations to politics. Can you give some examples of what types of mega donors are are donating this money? Well, you know, I wish I could, but yeah, we don't know. We don't know who right? they That's are, the problem. Right. And, you know, you look at in the last 10 years, uh, uh, you know, 10 years ago, it used to be the case that two-thirds of political spending was from candidates, right? You know you know where the, uh, the, the money was coming from, from the candidates themselves and from their supporters, all disclosed. Now that's flipped, right? In the last 10 years, now two-thirds of the money that floods into campaigns comes from, you know, these super PACs and these dark money uh, donors uh, and from these, you know, social welfare organizations. Organizations, and it, it really is, it's one of the biggest issues facing our country, in my view. You know, you ask why we can't get anything done on gun violence and climate change and immigration reform and health care. It's because our system is being corrupted by all of these ads, all this money that's yeah. flooding our system, and nobody knows who's behind it. No one even knows. And, and, and so beyond the obvious reasons, this is a problem because uh, we don't know who's influencing and, and why they're influencing politics. I mean, we right. talk about the, the ongoing Russia investigation. Uh, we need to know where the money's coming from. We need to know where the yeah. money's coming from. I mean, it's, it's really a simple bill and a simple concept. And it says, listen, you know, uh, the American people and the folks in our community, Coloradans, deserve to know who is spending money to try to influence your vote. Let's let them know, yeah. right? And if you're, if you're going to go against my bill or oppose my bill, that's a hard thing to explain. Why do you want to hide that money? Why do you want to allow mega donors to go undisclosed? Let's bring it to light. So there's a level playing field and voters have the information they need to make a good decision. All right. Well, you were telling me this is part of a kind of the first um, House measure that's designed to reform uh, elections a, a bit, uh, some voting rights, elections uh, ethics reform, as well yeah. as donor reform here. Uh, you have just arrived in Congress, really. Give us your <laughs> overall impressions of being in the House mm -hmm. so far and what yeah. have you guys been able to accomplish seeing as how we just, just ended the, sh right. the government shutdown. Well, I've been pushing very hard mm -hmm. for um, this type of comprehensive reform in Washington. You know, we have to change the culture in Washington. We have to clean up our ethics rules. We have to clean up the campaign finance reform system. And, you know, my last month has only reinforced my desire to do that. Mm -hmm. You see the level of dysfunction and partisanship and, and things just not working yeah. the way they are. I mean, I spent the last, I spent, you know, the first two and a half weeks as a member of Congress fielding calls and emails and, and taking meetings with constituents who are federal workers who weren't getting paid. You know, right. they couldn't pay their rent. They couldn't buy, they, they couldn't go to the store. They were having to go to food pantries and just think about the, 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 you know, the impact on real people's lives because of the politics that was being played in Washington. It's wrong. You know, we have to change the culture of Washington and, and the things that I'm doing in the first month and this bill is a, is a big start to that. Yeah, tell us a little more about the, the, the freshman class you're going in with here. I, uh, is there, 
I mean, should we have some hope here that, yeah. that things can turn around? Well, I'm an optimistic yeah. person, Nicole, by nature. I, mean, I don't think I would, I would have run for Congress if, if I weren't optimistic and didn't believe that, you know, our, our best days as a country and community can lie ahead of us, right? But that's not going to happen without people standing up for our values, staying up for the country and making sacrifices to make it happen. That's how it's happened in the past when we've been able to do good things. It's going to ha happen in the future, you know, by people staying up. And, and I'm encouraged by this class. You think about, you know, the fact that on January 3rd, a, a quarter of Congress was new, right? So, you know, this class has the potential to be transformational, not just because of its size and the number of people, but we're also very different too. You know, for the most part, we're not career politicians. Mm -hmm. We're not folks that have been spending their life checking boxes, you know, waiting their turn to be a member of Congress. You know, uh, like me, yep. uh, many of them are first, were first-time candidates and first-time elected officials now. Uh, we come from, you know, small businesses. We're, we're parents. We're veterans. We're people that were leading community nonprofits. We are standing up because we recognize the challenges facing our country and community, and we want to be a part of changing it. All right. Well, I want to let people know that you are planning to have quarterly town halls You back here in, in Colorado, in Aurora, and uh, you just had one. So we'll, we'll look for those in the future if people want to get to know you and get right there on the ground with you and ask some questions. Uh, thank you, yeah. Congressman, for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me in.